India's history is rich, birthplace of Sanskrit, incubator of religions, home to architectural wonders. Everywhere you look, you see signs of a magnificent past. Throughout this past, we have faced our shares of problems too. And if there is one thing Indians have learned to do best, is to solve problems. The Vedic period solved problems of numbers and astronomy. Sushrat Samhita solved problems of medicine. And in ancient past, Indians have solved problems of urban planning and architecture. In short, problem solving is what we do best. And the best problem we ever solved, the greatest solution we ever developed, is the one that doesn't exist at all. The problem of zero. Shunya. Over a thousand years ago, Aryabhat unleashed the power of zero for the first time. You see, before his discovery, mathematics couldn't account for the concept of zero. There was no way to talk about the concept of nothing. His discovery was so powerful, so revolutionary, that it went on to change the entire world. Shunya became a symbol and an icon of the beginning, the origin of the point of reference, the value multiplier, Shunya shaped history, and now it has the power to shape the future. From where we stand now, our future is spiraling out of control. Greenhouse gases are at an all-time high. Our green spaces are disappearing, and every day we are failing to bring clean food and water to many of our people. So we need to start thinking critically again about this concept of zero. Zero emissions, zero waste, zero hunger, zero devastation. Once again, 1500 years later, we need to look to the power of zero. I am at the Nehru Science Center here in Mumbai, a place that signifies innovation, the power of beliefs, and perhaps most importantly, a mission to use the power of science to overcome challenges. Today, we embark on a quest for zero. A series on Times Now in association with DuPont in search of solutions to some of the most critical problems faced by India and the world. We will meet some of the most exciting innovators who are using today's science to solve today's problems. Stay with us as we unlock the power of Shunya. <laughs> The power of zero dates back to around 458 AD when Aryabhat, a scholar, mathematician, and astronomer, introduced the concept of zero for the first time. The discovery unlocked the mystery and power of numbers, and the world was never quite the same. There's no doubt about it at all that Aryabhat's understanding of zero was very important because it was just not an empty space, it was a place in mathematics and numerals. In that sense, it helped solve a large number of problems. And Aryabhat went on to make other discoveries as well. But of course, the Shunya has a certain metaphorical status. He brought it into a scientific uh, framework and made it, it may have been part of popular usage, you know, in the, at the ground level in a certain kind of way, but he is the person 
who made it a part of mathematics something which could be proved something which was scientific something which was objective something which then got picked up later on it's not surprising that from india then this concept goes to the arab world conceived as a symbol of brahman the zero produces all numerical figures but resists being limited to any particular value it's a concept that is so universal that it soon became the foundation for mathematics cosmology metaphysics astronomy and eventually even computers the idea spread around the world like wildfire influenced major fields professions industries and scholars india had quite a range of great scientists in the ancient times uh, and one must not also forget the contribution of the nyaya school uh, and the vaisheshika school especially in terms of logic and um, um, physics uh, charak samhita you know uh, the medicine shushrut in anatomy uh, bodhan's theorem was again a very you know powerful uh, 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 mathematical finding and it hasn't just been in ancient times that india has thrived in problem solving in some recent times too we have made a name for ourselves jagdish bos uh, was, was a great uh, great biologist and he did something experimental uh, in biology which is called kind of earth shattering he started as a physicist then we had uh, we had c v raman we had uh, 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 we had meghnath saha Uh, we had a lot, lot of uh, distinguished uh, scientists who have got the Nobel prizes, made the impact. Chandrasekhar was an astrophysicist. So we have been able to meet the challenge of Western knowledge and put our imprint on it. There was the idea that India will become a cheap goods exporter. That completely failed. Instead, we became an exporter of brain-intensive goods. We're exporting software. We are exporting auto industries on the basis of constantly having new designs. We become a very big exporter of pharma, which again is a relatively high-tech sector. So we switched from the concept of uh, low-wage, low-tech exporter to high-wage, high-tech exporter. Today, there is a need for India's modern-day problem solvers to adopt this same fervor as the innovators of history. but today's problems are bigger than ever and we will need to collaborate among each other in order to develop solutions in other words we need to share our knowledge among each other if you've done it in the past we can do it now but to do it now there has to be a very clear change of perspective the brain power is there but the brain power has to be used in a certain fashion which is in keeping with modern times because modern times the dissemination of knowledge is tremendous and now with uh, with the information system being the way they are you know is is very 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 different from what it was in the past this idea that knowledge is shared and shared knowledge grows at each step of the way you're constantly being challenged by your competitors by everybody around you to prove 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 it to me not because you're saying so but because i want to see the facts on the ground i want it to be demonstrated to me this is what modern science is about and we need to share because today's problems are just too big for any one of us to solve on our own in the last 60 years india has changed so quickly and yet so many of us can barely keep up on the one hand many of us are seeing great opportunity but on the other many of us are worse off than ever before this is india's financial center mumbai alongside the greatest wealth in the world is dharavi asia's biggest slum and that's just it development is this tricky double edged sword as we grow we provide for some but we disappoint others we have 200 million hungry we have 300 million illiterate 
we need to worry about water sanitation literacy i think these are the real challenges that we need to focus on so innovations today need to really focus more on how do we improve lives of millions and billions at the bottom of the economic pyramid meanwhile our infrastructure can barely keep up on the one hand we see mind blowing inventions in our consumer electronics and yet 400 million indians lead unelectrified lives many parts of the country are disconnected from roads and access to clean drinking water is a huge problem infrastructure must be expanded as efficiently as possible we need expansion everywhere more roads more power more schools more doctors we need excellence because quality of our work is pretty poor and we need equity expansion excellence and equity so we can make sure that the poorest of the poor do have access to lot of these things but again as we expand how can we make sure that we avoid the double edged sword of development is there a way to innovate and grow without leaving people out of the equation or causing more problems well one small example of how to do this may come in the most unlikely of places in waste the growing nation's waste output is hard to ignore we generate 960 million tons of waste every year which ends up in toxic landfills this number is only going to grow but it may be that the very thing we think is a problem could actually be a solution a waste can be a very very valuable product if you neglect it it's a menace if you exploit it recycle it use it for energy it's a good project and so we have to kind of you know gobar gas for example you know make gas from gobar those sorts of things we have to innovate and what we have to do is uh, relate all our efforts to make quite sure that a billion plus people in the world who live in india and many of whom are very poor actually benefit from science in other words it may be that the solutions are right before our own eyes and we just need a little science and creativity to make them happen You see in India every third person is a young person and by 2020 India is set to become the youngest country in the world This means if we invest in our young people we will be able to create a generation of creative and scientific thinkers in other words we will create modern day aryabhats who can address our modern day problems After the break we will introduce you to some of these innovators who are embarking on 21st century quest for zero.